You're listening to Five Before, a faith community podcast. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes. For more information, check us out at faithcommunitylc.com or look for our app on iTunes and the Google Play Store. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast today. It is. It's recording. Um, This is my daughter, Sophie, and I invited her to come on because she was coming into town for fall break. She brought her girlfriends with her. She's involved with a campus ministry at Tuscaloosa, um, Chi Chi Alpha in Alabama, and um, it's kind of like a like a mission based ministry she can tell you more about it but anyway I knew they were coming and I invited her I said is the Lord telling you anything you might want to share because for me um, I think we have wisdom to be gained both sides of the street young and old and I don't think all of us older people have uh, the corner on the market of wisdom and I think we're in great hands with the future um, with it. what did we decide you guys were last night generation Z Z X? X. Was that this morning? Yeah. Z? Z. That was morning. Because everybody blames everything on the millennials, and now we've kind of moved past. I think the millennials are about to be 30-ish. So I just thought I would invite her to share whatever the Lord was um, laying on her heart, and I'm here to hear it as well. So <laughs> welcome, sister. Uh, <laughs> welcome to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, what is Chi Alpha? Um, Explain. So it's a campus ministry. Um, it's technically like an international thing like it's not just in Tuscaloosa Um, so it's just a campus ministry we have services every single Monday night we have a staff that's full-time and then a few interns that'll be going on to staff or into other missions endeavors afterwards but basically the heart of everything is discipleship Mm -hmm. which is what we'll always talk about like we have d group leaders so they're called discipleship groups shortened d groups Um, so we have a bunch of leaders who lead d groups every single week I lead one a bunch of my friends who are sitting over there lead some um, just trying to bring people in, just love on girls and guys on campus, just love on college students, and just show them what friendship with Jesus is like. And it's been really cool and saved my life. So, yes. Um, so, what has been Jesus teaching me? That's not a real sentence. What's going on lately? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, there's a lot that's been going on lately. But a few weeks ago, um, we were in prayer before one of our services, and I feel like the Lord laid... Um, was it like John 4, 7 on my heart? Um, and it's part of the story of the Samaritan woman that he meets. Um, and specifically, it was highlighting the verse where Jesus asked the woman, will you give me a drink? Not talking about the whole story, but specifically that line. And I was like, Jesus, what do you mean by this? Didn't give me an answer then, so that was cool. Um, but later that night, as I was falling asleep, he like gave me this beautiful little vision thingy. Um, that was me sitting in this dark room and I kept pulling all this stuff out. So it was bags and bags and all this like junk I was pulling out in a circle around me. Um, and I just like picked it all up and all of a sudden these big hands came out of nowhere. This might sound weird. Um, That's not weird. And I just put all the bags together and put it in his hands and he like pulled the hands away and then like all the lights turned on in the room and it was a dance studio. And then I got to like run around and like dance with Jesus and it was really cool. Um, And so then he just like brought me back to this verse of Jesus looking at the Samaritan woman and being like, will you give me a drink? And Jesus is like, will you give me you? Like, will you give me all of your stuff, all of your baggage, all these things you're worrying about so that I can in return give you living water so that you can live freely, so that you can dance around without baggage weighing you down so you don't have to worry about how everything's going to work out and give it to me. Um, And in that, he's just been leading me through learning what desperation means, um, which I'm still learning about it. So I don't really have a whole lot about that. Um, But just walking through what it means to live a life desperate for Jesus, not just I'm desperate to have him today because this situation is really horrible, but like waking up with the desperation of knowing that like your soul is not fulfilled without him, no matter what you try to shove there, it's not going to be fulfilled without Jesus being what fulfills you and what satisfies every part of you. And just walking through like how it's so easy to just be like, all right, here's my Jesus time now. Or like, all right, it's church. Or all right, let me go talk to this one girl and like minister to her. And like, that's when I'm desperate for Jesus to show up. Not like I'm desperate for Jesus to be everything for me all the time, 24 seven, he is everything, Um, which is really challenging and really, I don't know, I'm walking through it right now, but he's been so gentle and it's just been really cool that he's just been showing me that like, all these things that I think I need to hold on to or figure out how to take care of or figure out how to fix, like I'm not going to be able to ever do anything. I'm always going to be able to 
fix it in a way that maybe is okay, but it's not what is best because he always has what's best for me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just learning to release all of it because I don't have any control in the first place. So, you know, I don't know if anything I just said made sense. But yeah, that's what I'm learning recently. That's good. Where do y'all get? Tell us a little bit about the retreat y'all just went on. It's like a minute interview. <laughs> um, Hi. Tell us. <laughs> welcome. We just had our fall retreat uh, in uh, northern Alabama, <coughs> I don't know. Yeah. central Alabama. I don't know. Um, but it's just three days. So like a bunch of college students go out to the wilderness and stay in cabins, which is a fun time. Um, and we had a speaker come. Um, and we walked through a few different things. We walked through different kinds of forgiveness of like forgiving other people around you, forgiving yourself, and then the concept of forgiving God for blame we've placed on him. Um, that was probably the biggest thing I took away. I think a bunch of different people had different things of healing in different parts of forgiveness throughout the weekend. Um, yeah, we all got to get away and have like services and some really awesome worship. Um, and got to like play games and hang out with each other, but yeah, I would say the biggest thing I took away from the weekend was forgiving God for blame that I had placed on him for things, that a lot of it was also me forgiving myself. Because um, forgiving other people is one thing that actually is easier for me. But, yeah, just, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm all over the place right now. Um, mm -hmm. no, because I, I, like, mine is a lot of judgment. Like, I judge myself and I judge him and others. So that's kind of what, along that line. I kind of think so for me it's just encouraging to spend time with someone that, like these younger girls so if you came and brought like how many of y'all is there five just five five of them um and i just love pouring into younger women the lord has just brought women girls whatever into my life and i just get so much from them he shows me you know their hunger their desperation like she was talking about and um, so I don't at any time want to feel like I feel like I have it all figured out and I have all the wisdom stored in me, um, but also to feed into each other. So I just think that's pretty important. And I just wanted to give her the opportunity to share anything else you can think of. Jesus is really cool. He is cool. She, she did a sign at my house. You want to close this in prayer? Be all right? Sure. Sure. Cool. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to get to come here and sit with my mom. Um, just get to share what you've been laying on our hearts, Father. Um, I pray that whoever gets to listen to this podcast, Jesus, that you would just come and meet them where they are, Father, that your Holy Spirit would just come and reveal new things to them, Jesus, that it wouldn't be our words that change people. God, it wouldn't be anything that I say or that my mom says or anyone says that would be what people hold on to, but it would be your divine Holy Spirit that speaks to them um, internally, Jesus, and that's what would change them from the inside out, Father. Um, I pray that we would just learn how to live in desperation for you and, and in need of your Holy Spirit to help us in all situations, God, um, and just to be our best friend wherever we go. Um, yeah, we just love you so much, Lord. I pray that we wouldn't forget how good and how kind and loving you are, Jesus, um, and that we would just live each day just fully amazed by who you are god that we would never stop being amazed by you jesus thank you for how you love us mm -hmm. amen you're listening to five before a faith community podcast remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes for more information check us out at faithcommunitylc.com or look for our app on itunes and the google play store